everyone, welcome. You're watching the special edition of the India Revival Mission with me, Poonam Burde. Six months after the lockdown, where does India's economy stand? India is opening up. The country is walking the tightrope to ensure that the health of the people and that of the economy both are in good shape. Are we on the right track as far as the economic revival is concerned? From a historic GDP contraction in Q1 to some green shoots that are now emerging, have we really recovered from that shock? And if not, then how far are we from it? We'll try and find those answers to those questions to, through this broadcast. Sanjeev Sanyal, Principal Economic Advisor, is with us on the broadcast to find some answers to those questions. Kailash Adhikari, Managing Director of Governance Now, is also with us. Uh, so are economists Dr. Santosh Mehrotra and Professor Arun Kumar. Sanjeev Sanyal, my first question is to you. Over the last couple of weeks, we've seen uh, ratings agencies, several of them who have upgraded uh, India's outlook. We've seen multiple of them come out and see the green shoots uh, that are now emerging in the Indian economy. You're right. I mean, we did go through a contraction, not surprisingly, we, because we had imposed a lockdown for uh, health reasons. When we imposed the uh, lockdown, we were aware there will be an impact on uh, GDP growth, but it is a choice we had to make. But since then, we have systematically opened the economy up, and we have seen wherever we have opened the economy up, uh, economic activity come back. We have also simultaneously done uh, a, a, a ramping up of demand side measures. Now, we had come, many sort of observers had uh, commented that we had not been ramping up demand during the lockdown. Well, as we have explained repeatedly, it was meaningless to press on the accelerator when the brake was, when our foot was firmly on the brake. So at that stage in April, May, June, July, we had focused basically on creating a safety net. So our focus then was keeping the MSME sector alive through the cycle, providing the world's largest food program, 800 million people being provided food, um, uh, providing money through the uh, Jandhan uh, system. But now our tack has changed. We are now focusing not uh, on ramping up demand. So if you look at what the Honorable Finance Minister has been announcing in recent weeks, you can see we are giving incentives to firms to create formal employment. We have provided the PLI scheme to begin to encourage investment, particularly in export-oriented sectors and so on. So our tack is beginning to change. We are now beginning, as green shoots appear, our, our now our strategy is to ramp up that uh, momentum into right. the next few months. Right, Dr. Mehrotra, we've just had the RBI governor also come out and say that uh, the bounce back of the Indian economy has been faster than expected. Uh, there are several signs that do show green shoots like uh, Sanjeev Sanyal was mentioning, but do you think it's too early to judge? Yes, it's too early to tell. All prognostications are that we will contract by roughly 10%. We don't even know whether we are going to be in positive territory in FY22. Look. The bottom line is, there were four problems with the way the lockdown was imposed. One, it was sudden, four hours notice. For that reason, it was unplanned. Only three weeks later, on the 15th of April, we got some notification of some rules. Third, it was national in scope as opposed to being confined to where the international flights were coming in, which is what the source of the, of the pandemic was. And four, it was, by the Oxford metric, the most stringent lockdown of any country in the world. By contrast, in China, the Nash, the, which is a, a less democratic country than ours, the lockdown was not national. It was confined to Wuhan city and to Hubei province, which is where the pandemic broke. The, they didn't block all flights to all cities or, or all trains to all cities. They just blocked transportation between Hubei province and, and the rest of the, the, the country. And what, what told us to have the stringest lockdown? The consequences are, are there for all of us to see. We've ha we are having the, the worst contraction in the economy of all G20 countries. We are going to suffer a contraction this year of 10.4 percent by world economic uh, world economic outlook uh, prognostications, and the world is suffering a contraction of only 4.4. None of the countries of Europe or Japan or USA is suffering a contraction like this, and none of the BRICS countries are. What does that tell you? 
that our lockdown was poorly planned, sudden and, and national in reach unnecessarily so, and because we didn't put in place the fiscal package. And final point, we are being told repeatedly about this break and accelerator contradiction. For someone who works in the Ministry of Finance, they should know that when you decide to make an expenditure, which you could have decided in May itself, the actual flow of expenditure into the economy, the fiscal stimulus, could would begin only reaching the people three months later. I'm not talking about food, food, the systems are in place. Right. It, this is standard practice that it takes three to four months for money to flow. And because the fiscal stimulus has been too little, too late, it's been delayed, the economy has gone into a severer contraction and will continue in a contraction because capacity is closing down. Would you believe in the non-agricultural sector and in industry, the capacity is at 58.6%, right. never in our history. Right, Mr. Sanyal, so even though there are some positive signs, the criticism is that uh, the, even though there have been three uh, stimulus packages, several measures that have been taken up uh, by the centre as far as providing relief goes, it may have been too little too late. Also because the, as per data, it shows that among the 24 most promising or the 24 major economies, India is likely to suffer the most. So absolutely, I would like to uh, comment on this. First of all, um, there are a lot of pious uh, comments in there with not taking into account the fact that, of course, when you do a lockdown, which was necessary for health reasons, there will be a, a, a slowdown in the economy. That is only to be expected. And since then, we have opened it up and, that, and the green shoots that are appearing are happening now. Nevertheless, let us have a public bet here. The gentleman just mentioned that he is not even sure that there will be positive GDP growth in financial year 2022. So let me say that we are very more, more than likely to have a very sharp acceleration in 2022. And we are, I'm quite happy to reappear a year from now on the same debate with the same panelists and have a discussion about that. Because I think these numbers are just bandied about. But supposing those numbers do turn out to be very significantly sharper, then I would like to have this debate again um, and point this out. Professor Arun Kumar, there are several factors that can be looked into, like the unemployment rate has gone down, GST collections are up. There are several positives to look at, even though, yes, we did uh, suffer from a jolt. We did see a historic contraction there, but we are growing. What do you think should be, uh, you know, the factors, the sectors really, which should be now factored in by the government? Which are the sectors you think should now the focus be on? So just stepping back a little, uh, I agree that lockdown was essential. But as Santosh has pointed out, it was very sudden and the unorganized sector got very badly affected. And in our quarterly data, the unorganized sector is not taken into account separately. It is assumed that, you know, it's growing at the same rate as the organized sector. So in the Q1, the de decline in the economy was not 23.9%, but more like 40% because the unorganized sector completely stopped. And the unorganized sector is the one that is finding it difficult to revive. Because these are small, you know, people with small amount of capital and their capital got exhausted when the industry and their businesses closed down. And they are the ones who are still continuing to be hit very badly. Uh, second point is that what does lockdown mean? It means a cessation of economic activity. And therefore, both supply and demand get affected. So at the moment, our supplies are affected and the demand is also affected. And that's why the revival is there. Uh, as is expected, because when you ease down, certainly things will improve. Uh, you know, when you open industry, when you open businesses, certainly it's better than what it was in April and May. But the question is, how much better is it? You know, and that is where I still think that the economy is still 20% down compared to last year. So, you know, if you think about it, uh, what, what will happen next year? Of course, because the base is low, there will be a very sharp upward expansion. But that doesn't mean it will recover back to where it was in 2019. And that is where I think large number of experts believe that it may take one to two years for the economy to recover. The next point I want to make is that many of the agencies which are giving data that the improvement is better than was expected, they are not independent data collecting agencies. They depend on the government data itself. And the government data itself is flawed because the unorganized sector is not really being factored in into our calculations. So the employment situation and many other factors are still very uh, 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 fully, you know, reflected. Then the services sector, where you know you have people in contact with each other, 
that's where the problem is whether it's travel tourism trade education uh, health etc etc so very large number of sectors and let us remember that the services sector is 55% of gdp and if that doesn't recover well then the rate of growth will remain uh, you know low and uh, it will remain low compared to the gdp of last year uh, even next year so therefore you know we have to be very cautious that you know the unorganized sector needs to be revived right. and you know employment needs to be revived and you know unless employment and the unorganized sector revive the demand will remain uh, a poor and then we are headed into another you know uh, a severe wave you know and uh, uh, like in europe and america that will mean the exports will be affected and also in the indian economy because we can have for more lockdowns and more you know disruptions because of the rising numbers of cases that are taking place right. therefore you know we have to be very cautious we cannot really say that we are out of the wood you know that may take at least another year the vaccines they come say by january february but by the time the average population gets it will be july august so we are talking about at least 8 9 months before you know we can see some kind of normalcy you know so i think we have to be very very careful right it's interesting uh, that you mention european nations that you mention uk the united states because a lot of these countries have now gone back into the lockdown mode seeing the number of uh, seeing the spike in the number of cases we've seen in india as well uh, mr adhikari that there are several curbs in place can we afford to move towards another lockdown is it something that is financially viable for a country that is uh, still trying to struggle and recover uh, from the jolt that it received a couple of months ago you know uh, i believe punam that second lockdown would not be so economically feasible for india given the fact that the first lockdown led to a contraction of uh, 24% in the gdp now one thing that we need to understand is that with the unlocking happening yes uh, there was a time where unlocking had to happen and because of which the demand is also penting up as for the economic revival demand is a very essential feature and we being a, a resilient economy when 1.5 billion people come together and demand for various products and services that's where the green shoots are visible but as far as your question goes regarding the second lockdown you can have stringent sops you can have stringent measures in order to curb the the spread of infection but having a lockdown as previous would not be so economically feasible for india because that will take us way 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 back Right, Sanjeev Sanyal, would you like to weigh in? There is talk of a lockdown. It is on the minds of uh, the common man as well, as especially of smaller businesses, uh, because barring agriculture, all other sectors did witness a sharp uh, uh, fall as far as productivity goes in the quarter one of this year. Eight core sectors are still in the red. They have been gradually picking up, yes, but they're still in of the course. negative zone. Of course, if you have to go into a lockdown, you have to expect there to be an impact. So to say that there was an impact is just pious uh, repeating of the pank. Of course, those who uh, called for the lockdown were fully aware that there will be an impact on the economy. There will be impact on the unorganized sector. To make these pious statements as if we have just discovered afterwards that there will be an impact is uh, just dis disingenuous. This these lockdowns had to be done. very reluctantly they were done but because of health reasons which were repeatedly been explained by the government now the question is what do we do about it now obviously we do not we are still not in a position to completely open things up and the honorable prime minister has been on television continuously stating that we can we need to uh, remain vigilant um using masks and so on so that we don't have a big second wave i mean we've had one in delhi so it, it can clearly show you um what can happen and of course the experience of uh, the europe and the us and other places as well where there have been second round um flare ups so this is something we have to be careful about but nonetheless step by step carefully we are opening the economy up we are slowly but steadily adding in uh, demand measures to accelerate the economy right. but as we have to be vigilant and yes meanwhile we have not wasted uh time we have continued to do supply side measures there have been huge opening up of all kinds of sectors whether removing telecom regulations on the bpo sector right. or doing labor reforms or agriculture reforms many difficult reforms have gotten done so i think there are many good things that are getting done and i think uh, this is this uh, this pious repeating oh the organ unorganized sector the government is unaware i'm afraid we are fully aware of this there are many many measures of keeping track of 
unorganized sector and they do get reflected in the numbers please go and look at the statistical um, uh, methodologies they do right. take it into account there is no such assumption as being as uh, that this you know they just happens to move up and down along with the rest of the economy there is obviously a link but we do take these things into account in multiple ways and there are a large number of um, uh, uh, of indicators that are now available, which not have been there historically, like for example, the Apple and Google Mobility Index. Right. Uh, we have um, almost real-time data on electricity production, on uh, uh, railway freight movement, and all kinds of other real-time data that give us a sense that things have bottomed out and some in some sectors they have gone up. Like uh, Sanjeev Sanyal was mentioning, India is opening up. Yes, of course, it is uh, required. It's the norm now uh, for economic revival. Now, the government has been uh, pretty liberal about expanding as far as FDI goes. Do you think that is something that can be explored? Well, one is hopeful that now a performance-linked in incentive has been put in place for about 12 sectors. There might be some uh, FDI coming in. But uh, if you don't mind, Poonam, may I ask two questions of Mr. Sanyal? If we are going to contract in 1920 by 10%, then do we not have to grow by at least 10% in 2122 to get back to at least 1920 GDP levels? However, never in the history of our country in real terms have we grown at 10%. And Second question, why is the contraction of the Indian economy the worst in this year as compared to any other G20 country or the world or any of the richer countries? So let me answer those questions since it's been directed at me. Uh, we did carry out during, a particular, the, in, during the April to June quarter the world's most stringent lockdown, which was done for health reasons, and it is not surprisingly that we did also consequently uh, see a very a significant contraction of our economy during that quarter. However, we are now beginning to see the acceleration happening, and at a time where many other countries may have to go into lockdown, we are hoping to avoid having to do that. So I think our acceleration will be sustained. As far as getting a uh, economy growing at 10% in 20, uh, 21, 22, let me point out that uh, you will say when, when those numbers turn out that, oh, it's because of a low base. But remember, all forecasters have already taken that low base into account. So do not tell me in when a year from now that, oh, the high growth rate, it is about 10% because of a low base, please do not come back and tell me because you already know the low base. So statistically, you are going to get very high growth rates. And yes, you will begin to see GDP growth barring another pandemic or some natural disaster of some sort, uh, going back uh, perhaps to uh, significantly above uh, 1920 numbers um, uh, by a year's time. So I am quite confident that we will see the growth econ uh, uh, economic growth accelerating. But anyway, since he had originally made the statement that we will have negative growth in 21-22, let me point out that negative growth is negative growth it, after taking into account the low base of this year. So when you make a statement, please clearly state what you mean. Otherwise, making generic platitudes uh, statements uh, is not uh, something you should be doing as a professional. Right, quick closing comment uh, from all gentlemen, Dr. Mehrotra and uh, Professor Arun Kumar, I'll come to you as well. But Dr. Mehrotra, what is it that you expect from the central government from here on uh, for the econo economic revival in the country? Well, thankfully, the government is now getting on to the right track. However, too much time has been lost. I think there is no choice but to put in place an urban Manrega. Unfortunately, the government has rejected that idea. Secondly, there is need for a minimum income guarantee, only 500 rupees per month for most of our poor if we want to revive demand. In both cases, urban Manrega and a minimum income guarantee for 60% of our country's population will do it substitute PM Kisan. So it will not cause much more, much more expenditure. I can prove that. 
and urban Manrega will be substitutive of rural Manrega. So it will not lead to an, too much of an expansion of the fiscal stimulus, uh, 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 fiscal deficit. We need an increase in the fiscal deficit. There is no getting away from that. It has to be used effectively. And we hope that this idea that the infrastructure pipeline projects are, 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 put, are put in place, the investments are put in place as quickly as possible. Right. Mr. Sanyal, however, never answered my question. Why was the contraction in our economy in this year the worst of any other country in the G20? Well, unfortunately, I cannot get in a word from Mr. Sanyal on that. I'm running out of time. Professor Arun Kumar, uh, quick 30 seconds uh, closing remarks of what exactly is that you want the government to do from here on? So, first thing is that we know that the budget was planned with a plus 10% nominal growth, whereas now the decline would be at least 20% uh, uh, in nominal terms. And a 30% turnaround in the budget data, so tax collection will be far less, expenditures will be more, so the fiscal deficit will shoot up, you know. Already I expect the fiscal deficit to go above 20% of GDP if you take the center plus the state plus the, you know, uh, off balance sheet items and other items, you know. So it's a very high fiscal deficit that's already assured. Uh, the budget needs to be uh, reformulated. Otherwise, expenditures on COVID and other things will be difficult to manage. You know, so that's the first thing. Uh, second thing is that uh, MSME sector is what is being catered to. But they're the micro sector, which is six crore units. They are the ones who are left out. It's the small and the medium units that the policy is for. So for the very small micro sector, there has to be a targeted policy because they are the biggest employers after agriculture. So as uh, Santosh has said, an urban guarantee is very essential. Right. And so uh, other things also very necessary. Next is testing and tracing. Testing has gone down. And if we don't do testing and tracing, then the uh, disease will spread and we'll not be able to reopen the economy well. Finally, instead of supply side uh, uh, items that the government is pushing, it right. needs to push demand. Supply side is creating huge political you know, turmoil, the farmers, the labor, etc. Our attention is getting focused away from dealing with the COVID to dealing with you know, various kinds of uh, political uh, you know, this thing. So I think our focus should be entirely at this point on demand creation. And supply side can wait because investment will not revive unless capacity utilization goes up. FDI will also not come very much unless capacity utilization is better. So I think we are you know, barking up the wrong tree by going for supply side uh, responses rather than demand side. Right. Right, I'm sure the government is taking note of all these factors. We are, of course, looking to open up the economy so that the revival of the economy is faster. Shakti Kandadas has already come out and said that it is faster than expected. I thank all gentlemen. It's not all gloom and doom. There is some silver lining in this dark cloud. India is, of course, on the right track.